Amen. Thank you. Take your Bibles. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Preach a, a message entitled, In Everything Give Thanks, Question Mark. In Everything Give Thanks, Question Mark. And uh, oh my, Brother Randy texted me this morning. He's in Georgia and he's preaching tonight down there in Georgia where his daughter now goes to church and his son-in-law, Luke. And uh, he sent me a little clip of what had happened there at the Chesapeake uh, Walmart there. And he says, uh, in everything, give thanks. And he said, easy preaching, hard living it. And uh, boy, that's a true statement right there. And we know we should in everything give thanks, but sometimes that's easier said than done. And uh, so the title of the message is, In Everything Give Thanks, question mark. And we're going to go to the Bible, we're going to think about that. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. And we're going to read starting in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. And we're going to read through verse 22. And if you'll begin reading with me, we'll read it all together in unison. Ready? Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And there we go. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Say that, those, that phrase with me. In everything, give thanks. And uh, God is not the author of confusion. God gave us the Bible, and God encourages us in everything, give thanks. Before we go any further, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you, and I pray that you help us to stop for a moment. Uh, boy, open our hearts and our minds. Think it's a busy time. Big Thanksgiving meal tomorrow. Lord, a lot of preparations for that. Family in town. But Lord, on, on top of that, Lord, there's a lot of thoughts, a lot of memories. And Lord, I pray that you help us to stop and be able to rejoice evermore. Help us to pray without ceasing and help us to be reminded in everything, give thanks. Lord, we pray that you bless the service. We need you in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. My wife this morning uh, got up early. I wasn't able to sleep too good. And my wife came into my office uh, 6.45 or so and and uh, she said to me, she's going to Walmart. And I said, okay. She had to get some things, get in preparation for Thanksgiving. She left out, came back, didn't much say anything. And then a few minutes later, she came into my office and she had sort of a white flush look. And she had just gotten a text about what had happened in uh, that Chesapeake Walmart. And she said, I almost went to Walmart, but I, I decided to go to Kroger at the last moment. And her heart was pounding. And all of a sudden, reality of what happened, I went over there and I gave uh, my wife a hug, and I held her, and uh, I said, praise the Lord, you're here, you're alive, and I was just thankful, and I tried in my best in that moment to be thankful for my wife, be thankful for her safety. But the Bible says here, uh, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. And I want to go through this, and just bear with me, if you will. Look at that first part, rejoice evermore. Say that with me. Rejoice evermore. And if you can just think about the rejoice, have joy evermore. Boy, a Christian who's spirit-filled, who's saved by the blood of the crucified one, should live a joyful life. Well, we ought to have somehow, some way, have joy. Well, when you come to church here, I'm glad we're, we're a church where we have joy. Well, I walk through those doors and I, I see people who have difficulties, have problems, but without a doubt you have joy, not in necessarily your circumstances, but you have joy in the Lord. Well, we have a lot to be joyful for. Man, how many of you have been saved by the blood of the crucified one? Boy, how many when you die you're going to heaven? Boy, praise the Lord. God, God has been good to us. We can rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Then the second part, pray without ceasing. Boy, it's, it's important to pray without ceasing. When we were over in Israel, there were a couple of times that I stopped and I prayed. Uh, we went to the Wailing Wall, and that's the, the western wall there in Jerusalem. And I, and I went up to the wall, and I, I sort of forgot the hundreds and hundreds of people that, there for a moment. I decided I was going to pray. 
And I began to pray for my family. I began to pray for my grandchildren. I began to pray for my wife. I began to pray for our church. I began to pray for the teachers and the different individuals in the church. And I almost lost track of time. And I, and I got done with the prayer, and I thought to myself, I said, you know what? Praise God for my privilege to pray. Pray. It doesn't matter where you're at, whether you're in Jerusalem or you're in Chesapeake, but we have the privilege to go to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and go to him in prayer. We visited the Mount of Olives, and on the side of the Mount of Olives is the uh, bunch of old, ancient olive trees, and boy, we got there late, and uh, next thing you know, uh, the gate was locked, and uh, the tour guide was able to get the uh, guy to come out with the key, and he opened up this iron gate, and we went into the Garden of Gethsemane, these olive trees, and uh, the guy uh, began to read some of the scriptures about how Jesus prayed and the great sweat drops of blood. And uh, boy, he prayed, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And as we're reading that and thinking about that, uh, all of a sudden we got done with that. And they said, hey, we're going to spend a few minutes and you can look around the area. And I began to wander around in, amidst all the, the olive trees right there. And I went and found way back in the corner, a hidden spot by an olive tree right there. And I got on my knees and I began to pray. And I began to pray for my wife. I began to pray for my children, my grandchildren. I went through a whole thought process and I began to rejoice. And I almost forgot where I was at. I forgot uh, really what time it was. And I began to go talking to the King of Kings. You know what's neat though? You don't have to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. Well, you can pray without ceasing and Boy, this tragedy happened. I don't mean to keep bringing it up, but it brings a lot of thoughts. Why do the heathen rage? Well, they just do. Uh, all throughout, the, the, there's a statistic. There's been over 600 uh, mass shootings in the United States this year, and they consider mass shooting where four people get hit with a bullet. And you just think about the, the, the tragedy of the world today. We live in a wicked, uh, terrible world uh, boy, what can we do? We can pray, pray without ceasing. We can pray for the city of Chesapeake. We can pray for all their authority. We can pray for uh, the pastor and the deacons and the leadership of the church. And then, you know, we can uh, pray and then we can lead, have that prayer lead to where we comfort people and we give out the gospel. But let's pray for people. Well, we as a church, I, I, I prayed for the, 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 the sheriff today. Prayed for the, the, the mayor today. I prayed for our governor today, multiple times today. And you know what? I, I want to be able to say that I prayed for those people. I prayed for the, the victims and the people that are going through a difficult time. And then I want to be prepared through prayer to realize that God can use me as a Christian to be a light in a dark world. Make a difference. And prayer does make a difference. Now look at this. In everything, give thanks. Say that with me. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Wow, that's rough. In a shooting, you can give thanks. In a difficulty, in a valley, you can give thanks. In the death of a loved one, you can give thanks. When things are not on top side, you're down in the lowest of lows, you can give thanks. When the doctor calls and said it's cancer, you can give thanks. When all of a sudden you, you have a financial uh, burden or you lose a job, you can give thanks. Well, the Bible says in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know, I was thinking of in, in the short term, it doesn't seem like it's possible. In the short term, it seems like it's impossible in the midst of this situation to give thanks. What am I thankful for? Death? What am I thankful for? When we were over in Jerusalem, we went to the city of David and they had excavated the pool of Shiloh, and you're there. And uh, seven years ago when I was there, they've done a lot of excavations, and they just found the pool of Shiloh, and so they dug this whole thing out, and then they found this staircase, and the staircase was not really a staircase, it was actually a, a street that led from the city of David to the Temple Mount, it was a main street where they had a market on each side, it was one of the main streets, and then all of a sudden, they, underneath on the right side right there, there's a gutter. And in the gutter, there's a gutter right in there. And then the tour guide began to say, when we dug this out, you know, inside of there, they found a lot of different things. This, the, the time period that this was at was 70 AD and the destruction of Jerusalem. The Romans had surrounded the city and finally conquered. And he said, right there inside there, the gutter of the, the sewage gutter right there, people hid. 
They, they hid. That's where they died. And there's writing about that. And I remember looking at that and thinking about that and being reminded that, you know what? Whether I die from a Roman siege or I die from a, a, a gunman, no matter what, my life is short. Well, I'm thankful that I'm saved. I'm thankful that the Lord's given me life and breath. And so sometimes it's not the circumstances, but we have things that we can look for to give thanks. I'm thankful I've got friends. I'm thankful I've got the Bible. I'm thankful for God's mercy. I'm thankful that I live in America. Well, oh, I'm thankful for that. And we can, through this, through the difficulties and the, the struggles, we can give thanks. Psalm chapter 18, verse 49. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen. Psalm chapter 30, verse 4. Uh, o ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. We can give thanks for his holiness. Psalm 30, verse 12. I will give thanks unto thee forever. It's almost the same as in uh, rejoice in more, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. Psalm 92, verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Boy, Psalm 97, verse 12. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. It says that again. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. In the, in the Holy Land, we went over to a place called Shiloh. And I, I, you know, I've read about Shiloh before, and you know about Shiloh. It's where the Ark of the Covenant was for over 360 years. It's a little bit to the uh, north of Jerusalem and Samaria region, almost right there. Uh, you know, about Benjamin, the northern Benjamin part right there. Shiloh, wow, you remember what happened for this child I prayed? You remember that? Eli fell off there and as he, the Ark of the Covenant had been stolen. You remember that? Boy, they, they had the, the, the tabernacle and they set that up for over 300 years. The Ark of the Covenant was there. And, and the guy that was giving us the tour, he had spent a long time digging there and uh, spent some time with another archaeologist right there. And he was trying to describe some of the recent discoveries that they found. And they found this section right there that was the size of where the tabernacle would have been. The tabernacle in the wilderness, they made it permanent for a while. And all of a sudden he looked and he says, you right, right where we're standing, this could have been the place where the Holy of Holies was. And then all of a sudden he began to sing, holy, holy, holy. And you know what? It doesn't matter if the Holy of Holies was there. All of a sudden I remember, man, I serve a holy God, a wonderful God. And you know, when you remember, just like that verse, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. God's bigger than you and me. Boy, he's stronger, more powerful than you and me. You know, one of the things we can give thanks for is God's holiness. Give us thanks. In Psalm 105, verse 1, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. You know he needs to give thanks to the Lord now in a time of difficulty? We Christians do. You need to lift up their voice, say, man, God is good. Do you know why we sang that song, I thank you, Lord, over and over again? Because we need to be reminded, I thank you, Lord. And we as Christians need to thank God. Psalm 106, verse 1, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. You know what you can give thanks for? He's good. He's a good God. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, it says. It says, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. It says over and over in the, the book of Psalms, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the, to the name of the Lord. Boy, the name of God. We ought to give thanks to just the name of God. Oh, give thanks, for, uh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords. We went to Caesarea Philippi. Wow, I got to preach there. And what an amazing place. Uh, it's the place where Jesus said, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, or one of the prophets. And, and when I preached, I, I thought about men get it wrong. Men often get it wrong. And all of a sudden, uh, they, Jesus looked at them and said, but whom do you say that I am? And then all of a sudden, the, the disciples made a choice, and Peter got up and he says, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, and I thought about that. He's not, and then all of a sudden, if you look back there at Caesarea Philippi, there's this rock prefaces. It was the place where the Romans uh, set up a poly, polytheistic type of a place where there was multiple gods. And they had these little shelves with their, put their little gods right there. And you can see Jesus looking around and seeing all of these false gods. He's the God of gods. He's the Lord of lords. He's higher than the highest. He's, uh, he's the true and living God. 
He's the Alpha and the Omega, the first and last. And because we know the true God, we can give thanks to the Lord of Lords. Then it says, for his mercy endureth forever. And praise the Lord. I want to encourage you at Thanksgiving to give thanks. We're going to take a few moments in just, in just a moment. We're going to pray. But then we're going, to, we're going to take a moment. I want to encourage some of you to give thanks to the great God that we have. Verse number 19, look at this. Quench not the spirit. Say that with me. Quench not the spirit. You know, when we don't give thanks, we quench the spirit. When we don't rejoice evermore, we're quenching the spirit. Don't suppress the spirit. Don't kill the spirit. Don't push it away. Uh, I got back and my little Amos, two and a half years of age, he was so excited to see me, sort of. <laughs> sort of. And I, I want to give him something. I got him a special treat. And he didn't realize it at the time. And you know what he did? He went, uh, and he sort of did the, uh, and uh, Amos, get over here, uh, and uh, you know what it is, and here I'm going to give him something good, and uh, McDonald's, I was, uh, and some of you, that's what you do to McDonald's right there, but, but he quenched, quenched my blessing right there, and sometimes if we're not careful, God, God's good. The Holy Spirit uh, dwells within it, inside of you. Quench not the Spirit. Uh, praise or be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Hey, don't suppress it. Don't kill it. Don't push it away. Somehow die to your flesh. Somehow have a, a, a spirit of rejoicing. Have a spirit of, of quench, uh, not quenching the Spirit, but a spirit of, of joy and thanksgiving. Despise not prophesying. That's verse 20. Don't reject God's word. Don't reject God's word. Can I say that? Don't reject God's word. We went to tell Dan, which you remember in the Bible from Dan till Beersheba. And when they, the, the kingdom split, the, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom after Solomon's death, Rehoboam, and Rehoboam uh, all of a sudden took charge of the southern kingdom. And Jeroboam was a little bit worried about people going back to the southern kingdom to worship in Jerusalem, rightfully so. So what he did is all of a sudden he created these golden calves, very similar to Aaron in the book of Exodus right there. And all of a sudden these golden calves, and he put them in Bethel, and he put them in Dan, and he said, these be thy gods, basically. And, and imagine that. Here, here are the children of Israel, God's people, are told by the king, don't go to Jerusalem. These golden calves, they're your gods. Now, imagine a, a group of people growing up you get a generation, and that becomes normal. It's normal. You walk into Dan, there's an altar right there, and uh, these golden calves, and all of a sudden you've heard it over and over. These are your gods. These are your gods. You know about your gods in Bethel, and you know you got your, 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 your god in, gods in, in, uh, in Dan right there. And over and over in the Bible, it'll say things like this. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and followed the sins of Jeroboam. In other words, king after king after king after king after king, people after people after people after people, rather than follow the word of God, they despised prophesying. They despised the word of God. And they decided to worship these golden calves rather than the true and living God. We do the exact same today when we get off the word of God and we follow the tradition of man. Uh, we follow the world's cultural Christianity, you might say. But we are not to despise prophesy. We're not to despise the word of God. We're to hold tight to the word of God. But so often our Christianity, if we're not careful, is just like the Christianity of the northern kings where they, boy, followed the sins of Jeroboam. By the way, verse 21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. <laughs> prove all things, hold fast that which is good. But we ought to be like the Bereans who search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. You ought to know why you believe what you believe. Praise the Lord when the pastor preaches the word. I ought to preach the word. But eventually you ought to open your heart and your mind and understand and read the Bible, delight in it, be like the Bereans. Boy, what if pastor got up here and preached heresy? You ought to know if I do. Why? Because the Word of God, you got to be close to the Word of God and understand the Word of God and prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Then the last one, abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. It's so funny. We, we're so funny. It was, it's just funny. You go to the Holy Land, you know, you know who goes to the Holy Land? A bunch of tourists. 
There is, there, there is one place, went to Capernaum, there was 19 tour vans or tour buses there, 19. Couldn't even find a parking lot for these tour buses. They're just, every, you know, tourists everywhere. It's ridiculous. Why do tourists go to the Holy Land? Not for vacation. <laughs> they go to see the sights of the Bible. That's what they're there for. Where did Jesus walk? And you know what's funny about these tourists sometimes? Boy, they, they're there in the Holy Lands learning about the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll give you an example. There was a, a if I could say, pastor, Christian worker who went to the Israel and in the same hotel as me. And uh, I, I ate dinner with them. And next thing you know, I, I saw them sneaking off to the room. They'd went and bought some wine, wine bottles and they were hiding the wine bottles going off to the room. And I thought it was ridiculous. If, if you think wine's okay, why are you hiding it? Abstain from all appearance of evil. And I thought this is absolutely ridiculous. And first of all, it's wrong. But then second of all, good night, you're in the Holy Land. Abstain from all appearance of evil. I'm going to say it again. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Now, that's not, that, that is the end. But I want to do this. You know, today I've tried my best to have a good spirit. Tried my best to have a good attitude. I'm reminded in everything, give thanks. I want to be able to give thanks. But I also know it says before that, pray without ceasing. What I would like to do is, as a church, I'd like to get on our knees, if possible. I'd like many of you, and there's going to be a bunch of you that come forward and get on your knees. Why couldn't we take 10 minutes and just pray? Pray for who? Pray for the people that worked at that Chesapeake store, the dad or the mom that's going to go to bed tonight without their spouse. Pray, pray for the people that are involved. Pray for the, the people of Chesapeake, our mayor, city council members, the governor, the people that are involved. Pray for the people over Eva Gardens who have had cars going by that house all day long, and police officers, and who they knew that they were neighbor. Pray for the, the workers that worked with them. And pray for us as a people. Pray for your pastor. Pray for the people of the church that we can be and we should be witnesses, that we take these next few weeks and we, uh, boy, go out in a double force, maybe you might say, to give out the gospel to a lost and dying world. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. Thank you for being a good God. I'm thankful for 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. been preached many times. I've preached it many times. But it hit me in a new light today when I, I thought about pray without ceasing in everything give thanks. And I, I put that question mark there. And I, God, I know in reality I can in everything give thanks. And I pray that you help us not to quench the spirit tonight. Help us to not despise prophesying. Help us to abstain from all appearance of evil. Help us to rejoice evermore. Help us as a church to, even tonight, and not everybody can get on their knees, Lord, but many can. Help us to be able to take a few moments, really cast out all of our, our thoughts about what else is going on and, and take some time and be thankful. Pray for some of the people. Lord, I pray that you help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand